Hey everybody, I have a long overdue upload here for you today. Now when most people, including myself, talk about ancient history, it's usually we concentrate on Egypt or Peru or pyramids in Mexico or Mesoamerica. And often what is overlooked, and I am guilty of that also, is right here in the middle of the United States. And I know a lot of you have heard of this. This is called Cahokia Mound State Historic Site. This is a site of an ancient city that thrived about 1400 to 1000 years ago. And there are numerous mounds scattered throughout the site here. And what this site is most famous for is, I'm going to zoom in here a little and give you a, kind of a bird's eye view of this. But what this site is most famous for is Monk's Mound. And here it is right here. And this is not a mound. What this is is an actually an ancient earthwork pyramid. Its base is larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza, just slightly larger. It's bigger than the pyramids in Mexico at Teotihuacan. But the true history of this place has been overlooked, ignored, and actually suppressed. And I will go into a little bit of that, but I just want to give you some history, the standard model history of Cahokia, and I want to give you some of my own thoughts on it. And I'm going to jump around from website to website. And here on this website, and I will leave all these links below, this is an artist rendition of what Cahokia looked like when it was thriving about a thousand years ago. And this is Monk's Mound here in the back, and that's what he thinks it looks like. But I'm just going to read a little bit of the accepted history of Cahokia. It says, Cahokia Mound State Historic Site is located on the site of an ancient Native American city, roughly 600 to 1400 AD, situated directly across the Mississippi River from modern St. Louis. This historic park lies in southern Illinois between East St. Louis and Collinsville. The park covers 2,200 acres, or about 3.5 square miles, and contains about 80 mounds, but the ancient city was actually much larger. In its heyday, Cahokia covered about 6 square miles and included about 120 human-made earthen mounds in wide ranges of sizes, shapes, and functions. It says Cahokia was the largest and most influential urban settlement in the Mississippian culture, which developed advanced societies across much of what is now the southeastern United States, beginning more than 500 years before European contact. Cahokia's population at its peak in the 1200s was among the largest cities in the world, and its ancient population would not be surpassed by any city in the United States until the late 18th century. And I believe that was by Philadelphia. It says, today Cahokia Mounds is considered the largest and most complex archaeological site north of the great pre-Columbian cities in Mexico. And Cahokia was actually much larger. What we have in the state historic site is just a small main area of Cahokia. When uh, East St. Louis was built, I guess they just plowed over many of these large mounds. And uh, much of the city has been lost to urban development, which is really sad. And this happened about 100 years ago, I guess. But uh, I guess ancient St. Louis was known as Mound City. Now reading a little further on, it says this, and this is important. The mounds were later named after the Cahokia tribe, an historic Illini Wek people living in the area when the first French explorers arrived in the 17th century. As this was centuries after Cahokia was abandoned by its original inhabitants, the Cahokia tribe was not necessarily descendants of the original Mississippian era people. And this is just a common thing with ancient history. We have ancient sites with large uh, construction built on them that are just attributed to the people that are living in the area uh, either at present day or back in the time when the site was named. This is the same way with uh, Tiwanaku in Bolivia. It is some people credited to the uh, Aymara Indians, and they say this place was in ruins when we got here. The Aztecs say, this, say the same thing about Teotihuacan. They say it was in ruins when we found it, and uh, the Cahokia people just lived in this area around these ruins and they had nothing to do with the building of this ancient city 
So it's kind of screwed up that this place is named Cahokia because they have nothing to do with the original construction. Now, what's really confounding about this site is Monk's Mound and what it would have taken to build this mound. And this goes into that pretty well. It says this. The mound has a dimensions of 92 feet in height, 951 feet long, and 836 feet wide. Monk's Mound covers base covers about 14.4 acres and has a volume of about 21,551,623 cubic feet of soil. Other construction materials used in Monk's Mound include limestone slabs, bald cypress, and red cedar posts. Use of the limestone slabs in mound construction is important as a chrono chronological marker indicating a late archaic construction somewhere between 3000 and 1000 BC. And that is speculation, but it's based on some common sense. It says construction materials for Monk's Mound included only colored soil that is not found in the surrounding alluvial floodplain. The location of origin of the colored soil used in the construction of Monk's Mound is now being researched. Soils were likely selected for their vivid color and brought in rafts or on foot from 100 miles away. Their blue, red, white, black, gray, brown, and orange soil colors were layered in varying thickness in areas throughout the mound's entire construction. Historian Rick Osmond stated the blue soil is very rare and is known to come from Clay County, Indiana, and white soil may be gypsum, gypsum powder, which is found in northern Indiana. Red and orange soils come from southern Appalachian areas. The energy required to move 43.1 million baskets of earth a great distance to construct the mound is staggering. The population of Illinois is currently around 13 million people. That's in 2008. This means that each person that currently lives in Illinois would have to deposit 3.3 baskets of soil just to build a structure that approximates the size of weight of Monk's Mound. 50 pounds carried on your back is a difficult task and is impossible for everyone in Illinois. A lot of time would be required to deposit a volume of 21,551,623 cubic feet that composes Monk's Mound. If a population of citizens lined up with baskets and deposited one basket every minute, it would take 82 years to build Monk's Mound. If one basket was deposited every second, it would take 1.3658 years. If Cahokia's accepted population estimates are correct at 20,000 people at the peak of occupation, then each person would have to carry 2,155 baskets or 53.9 tons to complete the mound. The combined volume of the other mounds in the site is roughly equal to all the volume in Monk's Mound. That means it is safe to double these estimates to consider the entire work done at Cahokia Mounds. Now consider that thousands of mounds were built all over the country. The sheer workforce used to build these mounds is a feat that cannot be matched by any ancient culture throughout all the world. All things considered, Monk's Mound alone is a challenge to the seven ancient wonders of the world. Now we're back on Google Earth and this is a very important feature of Cahokia, I believe. And what was discovered here are ancient post holes and they formed a perfect circle. I don't know if you can see that very well. I will show you a better picture of it here. But this is what Woodhenge looks like when it was reconstructed. And it was definitely a celestial observatory of some site, of some sort. And going back to Google Earth, this is the view of Monk's Mound in the distance. And this pole right here, I believe, was a marker and it was a very important marker because if you were at Cahokia today and you were down at this center pole looking out towards Monk's Mound you would see the sunrise on the spring equinox directly rising over Monk's Mound and that just relates it to some very uh, important ancient sites that recognize the spring equinox in their uh, building structures. But here, this is what it looks like today. The sun on the spring equinox 
the day signifying resurrection rising directly over Monk's Mound. And that is viewed from what is called Woodhenge at Cahokia. That is very important. So people that have done some really good research on Cahokia definitely classifies the, classify these people that uh, built these original structures as sun worshipers. And people such as uh, Wayne Herschel have done some studies on Woodhenge and they he also says that they were tracking Orion across the sky and that fits with a lot of ancient a lot of other ancient sites also and I will leave that link below. And this is a, another artist rendition of Cahokia. And what do we know about Cahokia? Well first news and research of this ancient site uh, that got back to Washington DC was kind of suppressed. The Indian Removal Act had just been put into place and Washington DC and the US government was much more interested in suppressing the great history of Native American people instead of glorifying it. So it was kind of swept under the rug. We know the city pretty much the accepted dates of it uh, really thriving are between 700 and 1200 AD or current era. And that coincides with a drought that severely affected the Mayan and Aztec cultures in Mexico around 700 uh, current era. And it's not unreasonable to think some of them migrated north and contributed to the building and the population of Cahokia. There are other things that connected to Mexico and the Mayans and the Aztecs. Monk's Mound is said to be a four-tiered earthen pyramid, and I just can't help think the Pyramid of the Moon at Teotihuacan is a four-tiered pyramid. There was human sacrifices done at Cahokia, and the same thing was done in uh, Mexico about 600 years ago, and that's well chronicled by Graham Hancock in his War Gods. What led to the demise of Cahokia? Well, there's evidence of a great flood here, and I don't think this is a biblical flood. I think this is just a common occurrence on, on the Mississippi uh, River, in the Mississippi River Valley. There are great floods that happen all the time. Um, I believe the most recent ones were 1965 and 1993, but it seems it uh, kind of wiped out a lot of the history of Cahokia. And there's also evidence of uh, huge ancient fires, and it's not really clear if this is done uh, through warfare or just rebuilding projects. But uh, also, the layout of Cahokia has been compared to Tikal, the Mayan ruins of Tikal. And I will try to leave as many links below as I can. And I just wanted to show you a few of the artifacts found at Cahokia, and they certainly look Aztec or Mayan or could be related to them. We also have turtle shells found throughout the site and on Monk's Mound. And this is a symbol carved into this uh, rock, circular rock here. And the trident, and this is supposed to be a turtle, the trident on the left symbolizes death. The sun symbol on the right symbolizes life and rebirth and some people have equated Monk's Mound, they think this is a giant turtle effigy, with has, and that has to do with creation in the Mayan myth and also many Native American tribes, and you can see how they might think this is a turtle with the turtle's head being here. That makes sense. But what we have here is an ancient site that it seems many cultures uh, built around the ruins. A great uh, metropolis was built around this giant pyramid we have a circular observatory that tracked the sun, marked the day of the spring equinox, the day of resurrection. It may have tracked Orion, and it just, uh, just seems to be related to many other ancient sites around the world. So I think we should open our eyes and realize we have a very important historic site with the pyramid in it in the middle of the United States. I'm going to take you out on Google Earth. So there is a brief history and some of my own thoughts on Cahokia. I think this is a very important site and it should be recognized for what it is. If Monk's Mound here was not built in very ancient times, it was built with very ancient knowledge. So I think this site is very important. It's right here in the middle of the United States. It's often overlooked. Hope you thought this was interesting. You have a nice day.